Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com coming to you from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. On today's video, we're going to rewind and look at the success of this class of 2017. Overall, the class is 49-4 and four with one national championship game. And as you know, the season is yet to be determined as Alabama goes into this weekend's matchup against Notre Dame. Today, we're going to have player interviews, reflect on the success of 2017, and kind of look at 2017, the dynamic class. Some say the greatest class ever at Alabama. Now, right out the gates, this is the class of 2017, a gigantic class, right? 29. And to put things into perspective, there was seven five stars in this class, 19 four stars and two three stars. The average star rating was 4.1. Just a, a tremendous class. Beat out Ohio State, Georgia, and Michigan for the top spot in the Rivals.com recruiting rankings. To put things into comparison, I put the class at 2021, which is a very dynamic class. And look, you can just see four five stars, 16 four stars, six three stars, an average rating of 3.9. Look, not taking anything away from Alabama, what they've been able to do in this class of 2021, but you look to that class of 2017, it's really dynamic to see all those guys coming in to that class. Now let's kind of dive in to the class of 2017 and just check this out. Najee Harris, NFL bound. Alex Otherwood, NFL bound. You got a first round pick in Jerry Judy. Dylan Moses, who knows, probably NFL bound, right? Jedrick Wills, first round pick, and then Tua Tunga Valoa leading to this team. And then, as you know, Mac Jones in the season that he's put together, a Heisman finalist, one of the most dazzling performances that we've seen uh, overall at the quarterback position, and he has a great chance to win the Heisman Trophy. So as we look at the class of 2017 overall, in 2017, 13-1, and 7-1 and one in SEC, beat Georgia in the title game. Of course, they were led by a freshman that year in Tua Tungvaluwa in the 26-23 overtime victory over Georgia. Then in 2018, 14-1, 8-0 in SEC play, lost to Clemson in the title game, 44-16. In 2019, that was last season, 11-2, 6-2 in SEC play, beat Michigan in the Citrus Bowl, 35-16. And then in 2020, this season, their regular conference record will reflect 10-0, but they actually are 11-0 against SEC teams overall because they beat Florida in the conference championship game 52-46. Overall, overall, this class is 49-4 with one national championship, two SEC championship games, and the season is yet to be determined. I mean, you look at kind of the course of this team. Nick Saban's only had one undefeated team. That team didn't play the SEC gauntlet schedule that these guys played. So if Alabama can continue out and finish this season undefeated, you're looking at one of the greatest classes ever. All right, one more thing. Let's look at the class of 2017 just talent-wise. First-round picks, Tua, Tungvaluwa, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, and Jedrick Wills in the 2020 NFL Draft. All those guys left early after 2019. Now this year, NFL mock drafts project Devontae Smith, Alex Otherwood, Najee Harris, Dylan Moses, and Mac Jones as guys that will go in the first round. Now, are those guys going to leave? That's yet to be said. I mean, I think clearly Devontae Smith, Alex Otherwood, Najee Harris, um, and we've kind of gone back and forth about Dylan Moses and Mac Jones. I think personally both of those guys will go to the NFL following this season, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see what transpires after um, these next couple playoff games. And I think that Alabama and the, and the rest of the seniors across – college football landscape or guys that were ready to um, declare for the NFL draft have until January 18th to make that announcement. So um, you got a couple days following the national championship to figure all this out. We had an opportunity to hear from Nick Saban before the Rose Bowl game. Here's Nick Saban talking about the development of just every single class, not just 2017, but it's kind of about the development. Now, these guys might come in as five stars, four stars, whatever. It's all about development. Here's Nick Saban reflecting on the class of 2017 and mostly reflecting on just the development of each particular player. Because we don't have expectations and uh, we just try to take the guys from wherever they are and try to develop them so that they can be the best that they can be. And, um, you know, there's some guys that we have very high hopes for and think are going to be great players that don't really pan out. And there's other guys that, um, you know, become great players when you really didn't think that uh, they might become great players. So uh, I think we just take each individual player and try to help them develop you know, personally, academically, and athletically um, so that they can be the best version of themselves and uh, go out and compete and create value for themselves as football players. 
Now, the first player that we're going to look at is Mac Jones, kind of a rewind, committed to Alabama back in 2017. Now, remember, he was originally committed to Kentucky. He was a four-star coming in, came in with Tua Tungvaloa. So you know you're going to come in to compete. You also have Jalen Hurts on the roster. But overall, look what Mac Jones has done over the course of his career. I mean, he's kind of the testament to stay patient, wait your turn. He's played in 37 games. And over the course of his career, 5,300 yards, 47 touchdowns. He has been pretty much remarkable this season. I mean, you look at 2020 and 11 games played, 327 attempts and just four interceptions. That's incredible. 3,700 yards this season, 32 touchdowns. His efficiency rating has been fantastic, 76%. And I think that's really been a testament to him working with Steve Sarkeesian, understanding that playbook inside and out, and really having the wide receivers to just target Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, you know, earlier in the season, John Mechie. I mean, these guys have really stood up. Here's Mac Jones kind of reflecting back on that class of 2017. Yeah, I mean, I knew they were, they were all special, even in, before we got here at camps and stuff. I mean, all those guys, Smitty Ruggs, Judy, throwing to them at some camps, really cool opportunity. And obviously, you know, you can look at that class and be like, wow, right now there's a few guys in the NFL, a few guys that will be in the NFL probably next year. Um, and it's just really cool to be a part of that class. Kind of the, I was kind of the second quarterback. And obviously, like we talked about earlier, I learned from Tua, and I've also learned from everybody from that class. So it's been really cool to be a part of that, that growth. Next player we're going to talk about is Najee Harris. Came in as a five-star, the number one overall player in the nation. Talk about a crazy recruitment. I mean, Najee Harris, as you're going to see in a second, didn't even like the recruiting process just because it was too much attention for him. Six foot two, 222 pounds out of Antioch, California, the Bay Area coming to Tuscaloosa. That's a long ways away. And you look at Alabama's always stacked running back room, and Najee Harris was patient. Now you look at the course of his career overall. Talk about production. I mean, this guy played in 14 games as a freshman. He played in 15 in 2018, 53 games overall, 3,600 yards, 44 touchdowns. He's the career leader in touchdowns, surpassing Mark Ingram and Derrick Henry. Both of those guys clearly doing work on Sundays at Alabama. So I think it just is a testament to just being patient, sticking with it, and, of course, his talent. I mean, the guy completely grinds 4,300 yards at Alabama with 44 touchdowns. Najee Harris will be remembered for the rest of our time as one of the top running backs to ever play at Alabama, and that says a lot because this is running back you. Here's Najee Harris kind of reflecting back on his recruitment and about the class of 2017. Oh, so going back to recruiting, I didn't like it. Um, it's too much attention. Way too much attention for me. Um, I think I just showed up here. Hey, I just showed up. I didn't even. I didn't even tell him I was coming here. I just showed up. I was tired of it, man. I just. I just popped up at the airport with Tua. And then I didn't even know really all the recruits that was here. So first day of practice, I seen all these recruits that I knew in high school. I look around. I'm like, man, you know, we actually got a pretty good uh, recruiting class here. And um, I mean, obviously, it showed up uh, uh, in the championship game freshman year and now ever since um, I think we took off we did a coach Saban did a really good job of recruiting um, and uh, you know hopefully we get to bring one home natty home next up Fidari Mathis 6'4 280 pounds came into that class of 2017 as a four star and I think he's kind of been one of those unsung heroes when you look at the course of um, his tenure at Alabama and one of the guys that has certainly stepped up to be a contributing player on the defensive side of the ball for the Crimson Tide under new defensive line coach, Freddie Roach. Let's look at his statistics since he's arrived at Alabama. Came and saw his first time in 2018. 15 games played over the course of his career. 38 games played. He has 74 tackles overall. And I think he's been someone who has quite simply been dependable. Here's Fidarian Mathis reflecting on that class of 2017. Uh, when I signed, I really, I really didn't see, like, I didn't really think we had a, I mean, I really didn't vision the big class that we have, but just like I say, after winning that national um, championship my freshman year, I was like, wow, man, you got Judy, <laughs> uh, Tua, Smitty, all those guys, and man, man, that's a, it, we, we did have a big, a big class, so I'm just proud to say that I'm a part of that. Dennis Freeman with the next question. Alex Leatherwood. Alabama has been producing high-level tackles since Saban has arrived, right? 
This guy came in five star, six foot five, 298 pounds out of Pensacola, Florida. Let's face it, expectations are always going to be high once a guy comes in as a five star, right? We see it time and time again, every single recruiting class. Alex Otherwood has held up to that five star status. He's had a tremendous career at the University of Alabama. Glad he came back for the 2020 season. As you can see, he's played in 46 total games at Alabama since 2008. He's been a starter, played in seven games as a freshman. He was a key contributor and a key reason why. Alabama won the national title game against Georgia 26 to 23. Here's Alex Leatherwood reflecting on 2017. Yeah, I do a lot. Uh, I feel like we're the greatest of all time. If you ask me, uh, I mean, we just had like a lot of talent, but aside from us all being talented and things like that, we were all hard workers and we all had like a common goal in mind. And that was to win a national championship and be the best players that we could be. And that's why we came here. Next up, Devontae Smith out of Amite, Louisiana, four-star, the most humble guy we've ever seen throughout the course of covering Alabama football, right? Six foot one, 160 pounds, caught the game winner, doesn't even like to talk about that game back in 2017 when Alabama beat Georgia in the title game, but it's a piece of Alabama history. What he's done overall at Alabama has been tremendous. Um, yeah, I mean, there's really no words to, to even – Capsulate what he's done at Alabama throughout his career. When you look at his overall statistics, this guy has put his name in every single record book in 52 games played, 216 receptions, 3,600 yards, 40 touchdowns. Uh, I mean, every single game, this guy steps up. He's got that Mamba mentality, as we've talked about. This guy is going down as a living legend, um, currently is a legend at Alabama. And I think that's going to be the main reason he wins the Heisman Trophy. Smitty has worked for every single thing he's earned. Here's Smitty talking about the class of 2017. Um, well, a lot of us, we went to a lot of camps together, so we talked to each other. Some of us kind of knew where others were leaning to, and some of us were already kind of committed here and it was just everybody just recruiting each other just building a relationship and I feel like that's what made us so close is just before we even got here the relationship that we had all right and the last player we're talking about today from the class of 2017 that's still in the roster in the 2020 season is Dylan Moses came in as a five-star out of the IMG Academy originally from um, the Louisiana area Baton Rouge as you know, Alabama has been so successful at landing some of the best talent from the state of Louisiana. Very tough state to recruit considering you got LSU, you got Texas A&M, you got everybody kind of reaching into that honeypot. But Dylan Moses was a guy that came in and look at the course of his career. 37 games played, 100 solo tackles. Now, his best season is probably that 2018 season before he got injured uh, in 2019 where he didn't play 86 overall tackles, and that was the time where I think we all knew that Dylan Moses was a guy that was going to be um, NFL ready, just his mentality, his mindset. Now, he hasn't had the season that we've been expecting this year, so I'm curious to see if he does come back for 2021 or if he does hang it up and move on to the NFL. Here's Dylan Moses talking about 2017. Oh, yeah, of course. That was the uh, one of the main reasons that you know I committed to Alabama. You know, I wanted to be a part of a, a great team. And uh, be surrounded by great competition, and um, that was, you know, something that I looked at before I uh, committed. And I knew that, you know, us all coming together um, would be, you know, something that would be beneficial later on down the road. Well, we want to hear from you inside the comment box. Do you think this class of 2017 will go down as the greatest class ever under Nick Saban? You look at the numbers, you look at their overall production. It's a pretty incredible class. Who is your favorite? prospect player from the class of 2017 that's a tough one i'm gonna leave that for you inside the comment box you got plenty of options to choose from thank you very much for watching our video hit the thumbs up like and subscribe we'll catch you soon back at bamitinsider.com